as I said, the faster we move, the more time slows down. But no matter how fast you move, you can't make the clock turn back. Right. Okay. You can only go into the future. And once again, we've demonstrated that experimentally. That's real. So one of the things that I want people to understand is time travel to the future is not only theoretically possible, it's done. It's we been just, tested. It's yeah. been tested and it's been done. Mm -hmm. We just haven't done it on a, a very rapid scale because we don't have rockets yet right. that can go close to the speed of light. So with the plane that was traveling around the Earth close to the speed of sound, what was the time difference between that, that clock and the clock that was on the base? Oh, it was only fractions. I mean, it <laughs> was, was only could be measured by the atomic clocks. Okay, uh -huh. that was part of the problem. Oh, so it was only fractions of a second. It was only fractions. Of, that's the reason why it didn't make it into the New York Times. Okay, mm -hmm. it was because of that. Uh, but it was, but that's, unfortunately, it should have because it demonstrated what Einstein said, that time slows down for a moving clock mm. and that it was only a matter of speed that it doesn't show up dramatically. Okay. Right. But that's why the atomic clocks were used because it wasn't measurable on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. uh, but once again, as I said, even when you're on an ordinary passenger jet, time is slowing down for you but not enough that it's noticeable. But now when they were using astronauts, it becomes even more uh, because they're traveling close, a larger fraction of the speed of light okay, than a passenger than jet. Than a plane, right. Right. And it, aren't the satellites that are rotating the Earth traveling? Right. The, how, how fast are they going, do you know? I'm not sure about how fast they could particularly be going, but the thing is is that it's happening even for the, the satellites. Mm -hmm. But now you might say, well, then can we never go back to the past? Well, we can, but not with that. Now, everything that we've been talking about to this point is called the special theory of relativity. Right. So once again, in 1905, the special theory of relativity was developed by Einstein to show, and it showed that time is affected by speed and it allows for the possibility of the future. Time travel to the past is also possible, but it depends now on a whole different concept that has to do with gravity. Now, Einstein, reason why, why did gravity get her into this? Well, it's because of the fact that Einstein felt that everything should be limited by the speed of light. That is to say that light is the ultimate speed limit. All effects shouldn't be able to be going faster than the speed of light. Now, why is this a problem? Well, let's come back to something that has, goes back to Newton the Earth going around the sun. What keeps it in orbit is gravity. The gravitational force keeps the Earth in orbit mm -hmm. around the sun. Now, let's suppose that there was a cosmic catastrophe that somehow destroyed the sun. Okay. Light takes eight minutes to get from the sun to the Earth. Okay, That's how long it takes to go that 93 million miles. That means that if the earth, if the sun was destroyed here on the earth, we would still see the light coming from the sun for eight minutes. This is an interesting point. When you look out in the sky and you see the sun throughout your entire life, you're never seeing the sun the way it is now. You're seeing the sun the way that it was eight minutes ago. This happens for objects, all stars, the sun is just a star. Right. For instance, stars that are a thousand light years away from us, if that star was destroyed, it would take a thousand years for us here on the earth to see it. We would not see the star at the moment it's destroyed. Wow. We'd only see the it. The light would still be there for a thousand years? You got it. All right. So when the sun, if the sun were destroyed, it would take eight minutes for us to see that happening. And that would be, the us seeing it being destroyed would be a thousand years in our future. Well, for a star, for the star. For a star. But for, for, but for the Earth. For the sun would be. Eight minutes. Eight minutes in our okay. future. Okay. Now, but here's where the paradox comes in. According to Newton, gravity travels instantaneously from the sun to the Earth. In other words, the effect of the keeping us in orbit, mm -hmm. that's instantaneous. What do I mean by that? That means that if the sun were destroyed, according to Newton, since gravity shuts down immediately, we would be, we wouldn't have anything that was holding us in orbit. So we would have the following weird effect. We would see the sun sitting out in the sky, 
but we would be hurtling off into space because there's no gravity to keep us in orbit. So we would, it would be, what's going on? <laughs> if we were thinking right. about it, you know, because of the fact that light, we're still seeing the sun, but we're flying off into space. What this implies is that gravity, according to Newton, travels faster than the speed of light. Oh, wow. Okay? okay. That's important. And Einstein said nothing, including gravity, can travel faster than the speed of light. That's important. So what he wanted to do was to modify his theory to come up with a more general theory. And in fact, that's the name of the general theory of relativity in which gravity was limited. Okay, so he developed that theory. But in order, when he did that, what he found is, is that in order to get gravity to do that, in other words, he developed a concept that gravitational force is not really a force at all. It's a property of space. Now, this is a concept that I'm going to have to go back and explain a little bit. There's a simple way of doing it. Imagine that right here we had uh, a rubber sheet, okay. a taunt rubber sheet. Okay. okay. And suppose that I had a bowling ball mm -hmm. on that rubber sheet. It would be bending the rubber sheet. Right. Okay? And suppose that what I did was I had a marble that was on the rubber sheet. And I released the marble. The marble would move down to the bowling ball. Mm -hmm. Now suppose that the rubber sheet is there, but it's transparent. Okay, just say it's a transparent piece of rubber sheet. Okay. All you could see is the bowling ball and the marble. So I release the marble. The marble moves down towards the bowling ball. But what you would say, because you can't see the rubber sheet, is you would say, oh, somehow this bowling ball is pulling on the marble, okay? Because those are the only two things you could see. Yes. All right? Einstein said that is exactly what's happening in real space with the sun and the earth. The sun is like the bowling ball, and the earth is like the marble. What's happening is, is that the sun is bending the empty space around it, but we can't see that bending of space. Oh. All we can see is the earth and the sun. Now, let's go back to the uh, marble again. Suppose I take the marble and I give it a little bit of a sideways motion. And you could do this at home if one mm -hmm. wanted to, okay? You like could a get, funnel, maybe? Yeah, you could get the uh, marble to sort of move yes. around the bowling ball, okay? If you just gave it, it's like a skater on a roller derby mm -hmm. ring. Okay, that's what's happening with the Earth and the Sun. Fortunately for us, when the Sun was, when the solar system was formed, okay, the Earth had a little bit of a sideways motion. So rather than plunging directly into the Sun, the Earth goes around and around and around. Oh wow, that's a cool, that's a cool image. Okay, that's a beautiful image, as a yeah. matter of fact. That's what's happening. The sun is really bending empty space. Now, wow. why is this important? Now, let's go back to the rubber sheet again. Okay. Suppose that I take the bowling ball off the rubber sheet for a moment, mm -hmm. okay? The rubber sheet's going to vibrate, right? And so that vibration is going to move from the uh, bowling ball up to the marble. If the sun is destroyed, it's going to cause space to vibrate mm. a little bit. But now this vibration, which remember, those vibrations are vibrations of space, but what Einstein said is, is that this warping of space is what we call gravity. So these are actually gravity waves that are traveling from that, that vibration or gravity waves traveling from the sun to the earth. Now it turns out that if you calculate how fast those vibrations are moving, mm -hmm. they're moving at the speed of light. In other words, according to Einstein, gravity can only travel at the speed of light because gravity is the warping of space, okay? And that is, so what that means is, is that if it's any constellation, according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, if the sun were destroyed, we would see the sun in the sky for eight minutes, but since gravity only travels at the speed of light, we would still be connected to the sun for eight minutes. Oh, wow. Okay? So 
we would still see the sun. Okay. And we would still be in orbit around the sun right. for, for eight minutes. Now, Einstein had a number of different ways of demonstrating this without having to depend on the sun being destroyed. Mm -hmm. What one of them wants uh, is, a, is a technical thing. It has to do with the orbit of Mercury, but a simpler one has to do with uh, what Einstein found is, is that w because of the fact that you now have limited gravity to traveling at the speed of light, mm -hmm. then its effects are like light in motion. That is to say that time is now going to be affected by gravity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember that before we had time being affected by speed. 